Hey guys, Ricky and Aaron here. Another top 10 list. Yep, and today we are going through our top 10 SNES co-op games. Yes. So we are stoked. It's a good list. We got some Real good list. very good games on there. There's only three rules to this list. Um, rule A is that it can only be one game per franchise. Yeah. Uh, rule B is that we've had to have played the game before. And rule C is that we're excluding fighting games because we're going to do our own list yeah. separately for games like, you know, There's Mortal too Kombat, many of them. Street Fighter, and all that. So those are excluded. Otherwise, as always, leave comments below of your top ten if you don't like ours. And uh, even if you do like ours, leave us some others that you uh, thought you liked. Yeah. But until then, here we go! My video capture card hasn't been working too well lately. Please excuse the poor quality in some of the visuals. Number 10. NBA Jam! Okay, so coming from two people who don't care much for sports at all, you know if a basketball game makes our top 10 list, it must be good. So where do I even start with NBA Jam? I guess I could start with the obvious, the announcer. Now I won't go into a cheesy montage of me saying what he says, I will let him do all the talking. So good. And how about those dunks? They are slam-tastic! Yeah, that was stupid. I think the creators of NBA Jam were brilliant when they made this game. I bet they were trying to reach beyond basketball fans, now this is just a guess, but it worked. Everybody loves this game, sports fan or not. I will get beaten brutally by all of you in the comments if I don't mention this. I actually went to go play a pickup game of basketball about three months ago on a whim. Man, that was a bad idea. And when I made my first and pretty much only basket, I yelled, HE'S ON FIRE! And I swear everyone on the court stopped and looked at me as if they were going to murder me in my sleep. Thanks, NBA Jam. Number 9. Final Fight 3. Final Fight 3. Let's make one thing clear. Final Fight Part 1 on the SNES is not a co-op game, so it could not make the list. And I never really played Part 2 very often, but Final Fight 3? Oh yeah! Now the game brings us the return of Guy from the original. Hagar's still there as usual with a ponytail for some random reason, but we also get to meet Lucia and Dean. Something I personally really enjoy here is some of the new moves we get, like the dash, and dash attacks, and dashing jump attacks! Dashers! Dashers! Doodly 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 doodly. There are also some techniques, similar to that of Street Fighter. This third installment also features a variety of weapons, food to replenish your health, and bonus point items which were all in the previous two games. I wouldn't call the soundtrack to this game pretty or beautiful or anything, but I would definitely say the songs are a perfect fit for a beat em up. Dude, they're not that good. You're an idiot, Aaron. Now just imagine Link to the Past music playing in the background of this game. It doesn't work. Maybe it does. Hmm. This is a classic beat em up on the SNES, and I hope you get a chance to play this if you have not. You will enjoy all six stages with a fat smile on your face. Look at that stupid ponytail. Number 8 Super Double Dragon. Ah, co op happiness right here. This is the fourth in the Double Dragon series, and it is glorious. What sticks out to me first is the controls and the feel of the game. When you punch or kick or smack some fools down with your nunchucks, it feels spot on. The sound effects are some of my favorite as well. I especially like the sound the guys put out when you kill a baddie. I actually hate that stupid word, baddie. Super Double Dragon offers some rad fighting moves. By holding R or L, then attacking, can offer a few different types of attacks. My personal favorite is a roundhouse kick. Ooh, and also the arm grabs and the different types of weapons you can pick up. The music is another great bonus. The original Double Dragon gave us some remarkable tunes, and Super Double Dragon keeps that legacy going. There is only one thing I think this game is missing. Bimmy and Jimmy. Number 7. Pocky and Rocky. Before I played this game for the first time as a child, my sweet little moron heart thought I was going to be playing some type of Rocky game. So what is Pocky and Rocky you may ask? Well it's actually a shoot 'em up style game, and could maybe be called a cute 'em up. Yes, cute 'em up is a thing. Don't let the cuteness fool you though, 
The game is very difficult, but actually seems a little easier than it is. Due to its super sweet relaxing music, well, at least as far as we got. Both characters here are pretty much the same, but there are a few differences here. Pocky seems to move a little faster than Rocky, and Rocky's slide attack slides a little bit further than Pocky's, just to name a couple. There are six levels here, and after beating each boss, the game triggers some pretty good cutscenes that really help the story move forward. And speaking of the story, basically Rocky is a part of a group called the Nopino Goblins. Some time ago they went insane and Pocky helped cure them, but now Rocky is back to tell us the Nopino Goblins have gone insane yet again. During this time, both Pocky and Rocky are attacked by Nopino Goblins who seem to be under a spell. Together, Pocky and Rocky must unravel the mystery of who's controlling the Nopino Goblins. The game is one player, but two players is where the real entertainment is at. Now either go play this game or go watch Rocky 4. Adrian! Number six. Donkey Kong Country 2! Rare, we miss you. Now before I say anything, just know that we love all the Donkey Kongs in the series, but since we had to choose one, we picked Donkey Kong Country 2. This is the one Ricky and I played the most together in the series. What I think made this game stand out amongst the rest for us is the characters. Whenever I played Donkey Kong Country 1, I would always want to use Diddy Kong because he was so fast. Donkey Kong was way too slow for me. So given the fact that both characters are now fast, makes the co-op that much more fun to play. Dixie is a very good character, and she can float kind of the way Peach does in Super Mario Bros. 2. And I know you guys know how I feel about Super Mario Bros. 2. I love all the animal buddies that came along for the sequel. Squitter the Spider, Glimmer the Anglerfish, Rambi the Rhino, Rattly the Rattlesnake, Clapper the Seal, Unguard the Swordfish, and Squawks the Parrot. How could I forget the music? To put it simply, it's beautiful. The tracks are so engaging. They have a depth and warp to them that puts you deep into the game. Oh, and I still can't walk by an electric guitar without picking it up and doing this. There is so much more to say about this fantastic game, but hey, this isn't a review. It's a top 10. I still love you, Cranky Kong. I still love you. Number 5 Wild Guns Let's go back to the times of the old Wild West. Wait, robots? Haven't I seen this movie? Oh please, no. Oh my God, Don't why? make me watch it. Oh please. God, no. It's terrible. Ah. I hate this movie. No. I love me some wild guns. This cowboy creation came to North America in July of 1995. And what a great year it was. I did get this when it came out, but sadly, don't own it anymore. Thanks for the gameplay, Nintendo Wii. As you play this gem of all gems, you have the choice of basically being Clint Eastwood or Annie Oakley. And it's not one of those games where you'll be fighting to pick the cool player, because both are freaking awesome. Now something I very much enjoy in this fixed view shooting gallery type of style in the game is that you have some pretty sweet moves that work really well with it, including jumping, double jumping, and dodge rolls. There are many types of guns to acquire here, and you can even lasso yourself up some robots. Yeehaw! Playing this game with a friend is so much fun, and I just can't tell you how much I love this game. The game can be difficult at times, but there are three difficulty levels to choose from. Don't be a wuss. Pick hard. Yeah, we picked easy. <laughs> Four. Sunset Riders! Yeehaw! What's wrong with you guys? Why do you guys pick so many cowboy games? Well, this is Aaron, and a little known fact, my dad was actually a cowboy in Texas growing up, so they have a soft spot in my heart. Now Sunset Riders, that is a fun game. In Sunset Riders on the Super Nintendo, you can choose to be one of four bounty hunters, each player having a different type of firearm. But just play as Cormano, he is the man. Come on, he wears a poncho! So I originally played this in the arcades when I was younger, and when I played this one on the SNES, it was just as fantastic. It shows you a different wanted poster at the start of every stage and lets you know what crook you will be shooting next. When you get to each end boss, you are greeted with some of my favorite quotes on any system. Marry me with my money. 
Sunset Riders also keeps you on your toes, even though the bullets are basically moving in slow motion, with dynamite, bulls, falling chandeliers, trains, and horseback riding. If you are a fan of run and gun games or the Wild West, you need to play this game. Actually, even if you're not a fan of any of those types of games, play it anyways. <laughs> Super Mario Kart! In September of 1992, you could walk outside and see no children playing anywhere. Why you may ask? We were all playing Super Mario Kart! Yay! Now my love for racing games that had vehicular combat started with RC Pro-Am for the NES. But when this came out, sweet mother of Mario, I was hooked. Choosing from 8 different Mario series characters was a dream come true. My character of choice was always Toad. Super Mario Kart offered three different cups for you to race in, and four if you beat the first three. And each cup has five different tracks in them. Each track was different from the last, making the game extremely fun and non-repetitive. One of the biggest draws for me was all the power-ups. Ah, that feels good. This game is easily one of the greatest co-op games on the SNES and now continues to be a staple for all the consoles following it. Thank you, Red Shell. Thank you. Number two. Turtles in Time. So I'm sure all of you knew this would make it on the list. And well, here it is. Ta-da! Turtles in Time is regarded by many as the greatest beat-em-up on the SNES and the greatest beat-em-up of all time by many. When you start, you have the choice of picking one of four Ninja Turtles. I always chose Mikey because, well, he had ADD just like me. Hooray! Now if you have not played this, which I doubt, you may ask, why is this so much fun? Well little Jimmy, sit down and let me tell you a story. Turtles in Time is just flat out fun. The graphics are bright, the soundtrack is excellent, and the controls respond exactly the way they should. Everything just feels right. I love the way you can slam your enemies back and forth, and also love chucking them straight into the screen. And I'm not kidding when I say, to this day, I can't even eat an apple without saying this. Big Apple! 3 a.m. Talking about Turtles in Time gets me super excited to see the upcoming movie. Wait, Michael Bay? Uh, I guess I can live with it. But I'm still pretty excited. Teenage Alien Ninja Turtles? What the- Number one. Batman Forever! Contra 3. <laughs> yeah, right. Contra 3. Alright, Ricky. How much do we love this game? So freaking much. Contra 3 The Alien Wars is one of the funnest run and gun games I've ever played in my entire life. Now we have all played Contra on the Nintendo. This game did the exact same thing, but just did it so much better. Not only did they keep the spreader around, but you could tell the machine gun the entire time. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's not all they did with the weapons, little Ricky. Don't forget, you can switch between weapons. You can actually hold L and R and shoot both of them at the same time. That is freaking rad! Something I didn't want to forget before I get too far is the intro in this game. When I saw that as a kid, I was scared out of my mind, and to this day, it's fantastic still! Speaking of things that scare you in this game, how scary is that turtle boss? Whoa! The only time I ever hear people complain about this game is the top-down views on some of the levels, but honestly, they just suck at the game. I enjoyed it and I could handle it really well. Honestly, Aaron, for me, there's no flaw in this game. This is the perfect. I said it, the perfect Super Nintendo co-op game. Dude, you don't gotta tell me twice. You know what? Let's go play it right now. Let's go. All right. Well, that's it. I hope you guys like the list. If not, just send us your list. Yeah, put it in the comments below. Yeah. Please like the video, you guys. This takes a lot of time. Um, subscribe if you haven't, that uh, helps us out a lot, makes us feel good. 
And I know I did this before in our top 10, but I really wanted to say thank you again to my buddy Eric over at Crossroads Reviews. Thanks, I'm Eric. gonna put his link in the description below. He just helped out with a lot of technical things for us that I don't have a lot of time to do all the time. So seriously, you guys, check out his channel. I'm not kidding when I say it's a really good channel. You will not regret it. Everybody that I sent over there actually tells me thank you for sending me over here. He does a lot of cool things, kind of like Classic Game Room, but I honestly think he's better. So um, enjoy that. And you guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. Like we said, leave comments below of what you guys like. Until next time. But wait, don't forget the honorable mentions. Oh yeah, you're right. Here they are.